a diverse and inclusive force is a war fighting imperative. This is on a slide at the Air Force Academy. General Clark, do you agree with that statement? I do agree with that statement, sir. So, I mean, were, were the Mongols diverse? Well, sir, uh, I, I'm not really uh, as versed on Mongol warfighting as how I about, am on how about the US Vikings? warfighting. Were the Vikings diverse? Again, sir, I'm looking at our country, the most diverse country in the world. Sure, sure, but this is about a war fighting imperative. How about the, fight, the force in Ukraine? Are the Ukrainians fighting the Russians a diverse force? Sir, once again, uh, my concern is the people that I'm charged to build into leaders. The right, but you would, you would acknowledge that throughout history, including present history, that statement hasn't borne true in every example, right? Sir, what I would say is that those countries have to rely on the full force of their population to, to build a war fighting force yeah. to win our wars, and that's why it's important for us to be diverse, because sure, our so nation- So let's look at the population that actually makes up the, the, the fighting force frequently. Now we have more w men than women, right? 70, 30-ish? That's right. correct. And, and of the men we have, most of them are not transgender men, most of them are cisgender men, right? Uh, yes, sir. But yet, at our academies, we pu push something called the Brooke Owens Fellowship. Are you familiar with that? I am, yes, sir. And in that fellowship, it specifically says, if you are a cisgender man, this program isn't for you. So you just said that your answer on why we, why we do such this, this full hug of these diversity concepts is because it's all about the fighting force that we draw from, but you, you're literally pushing a program in the academies that says, if you're a cisgender woman, a transgender woman, a non-binary, agender, bigender, two-spirit, demigender, what's demigender? Sir, that's, a, uh, that's a, a, a term of the people that are eligible for that particular scholarship that yeah, what's is available a person? to, it's a person who looks at their gender in a, in a, different, uh, a different way than I do, sir. Well, sure, that's all so, of these people. You're a cisgender man, you don't even get to apply. Well. Do you know what gen demigender really means? I, I'm not really sure, sir. Right, so do you know what agender means? All one word, not a space gender, but a gender. Uh, sir, I don't. Right, so here we are pushing a fellowship, calling for people that you don't even know what the words mean, and the number one group of people, the cisgender men, are excluded. Now, in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion, should we be pushing programs that we can't define that exclude the largest group of service members? Well, sir, first, that uh, program is not an Air Force Academy program. It's a program open to our entire country. Right, so but we you, guys, allow, you guys advocate for it within the academy. We allow our cadets to apply for it. Why are you allowing your cadets to apply for a program when you cannot define the basic terms of eligibility? Because it's an opportunity for us to develop them as warfighters, and we look for every opportunity that we can. But you don't even know what the words mean. How can to, you use this as a way to develop the warfighters if you don't know what it means? Well, some of those those uh, terms may not be applicable to us at the Air Force Academy, but some are. But and but so, but if, well, if you don't know what they mean, it's hard to tell if they're applicable or not. So, I think one of the reasons why some of this stuff has gotten into the academies is because we don't have the same oversight from the Board of Visitors. And Mr. Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, an article from the Washington Examiner entitled, To Push Woke Ideology, Biden Illegally Gutted Military Academy Oversight Boards. And so in this piece, it goes through a timeline where on September 8th, 2021, all of President Trump's appointees were fired. On September 17th, Secretary Austin created Board of Visitors subcommittees, and then he populated those subcommittees with people who weren't on the Board of Visitors. Have you ever seen that happen before? Sir, our Board of Visitors is populated and, uh, and supports us in great fashion. Right, so. what about the subcommittee? Are there people on the Board of Visitors subcommittees who are not on the Board of Visitors? I can't answer that, sir. Seems like something we ought to know. I, I'm, yes, sir, I'm not sure. Right, but here. that would be odd, right? I mean, here, okay, I'll, let me ask the question this way. You, you don't have any basis to disagree with the reporting here in the Washington Examiner that literally we have people who are not on the Board of Visitors who are serving on these subcommittees. You have no basis to disagree with that, do you? 
Uh, sir, I'm not exactly sure the question you're answer, asking. So I, so I'll have to take well, that for record so I can understand what you're Look exactly what you're asking. Hope. Thank you, Mr. Representative Escobar. 